As you may or may not have heard, the mall clothing staple Route 21 has declared bankruptcy and is closing all 540 stores. With it comes a long list of employees who were wronged by a CEO that had nobody's interest in mind but his own. A company that's bad decision making and a lack of innovation finally caught up with them. Today, we're looking back on the full story of Route 21, from its bright beginnings to its dark end. Starting in 1970, the original name for the store was Pennsylvania Fashions, as it was founded in Pittsburgh. In 1989, Cary Klein would buy the company from his father, whose name I couldn't find, and was the main reason why the company started aiming its products towards the youth. He would keep things going as Pennsylvania Fashions all the way up until 2002 when the company was filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This would be when Cary Klein would sell 50% of his shares to Apex Partners, a private equity group who now held majority shares of the company. At the time of the bankruptcy, the company managed 250 stores, which were estimated to bring in $180 to $200 million annually in sales. And in May 2003, after undergoing a voluntary reorganization, the company would close its bankruptcy and reopen as Rue 21. Rue 21 was a clothing and accessory store aimed at young adults who wanted to look or feel 21. The Rue part of the name comes from the French word for street, a clever play on the type of clothing the company specialized in. And safe to say they managed to come back hard. During the reopening, the company set out an ambitious plan to open 170 more stores by 2008, making the total around 420. It seemed crazy at first, but by the beginning of 2009, the company not only hit their target, they exceeded it, opening their 500th store in Harlington, Texas. And just four years after that, in 2013, they opened their 1,000th store in Enid, Oklahoma. It was wild how much the company was expanding. Almost too wild. And a large part of this was them being the leaders in an underserved market. During the 2000s, the rise of teen culture was at an all-time peak. They were what everything was catered to. MTV, Nickelodeon, the Kids' Choice Awards, energy drinks, soda, music, candy, video games. It was all marketed with teens in mind, because in the 2000s, they were where the money was at. And with this came the emerging stylistic trends that celebrities these kids idolized were wearing. Teens wanted to wear what 50 Cent or Britney Spears was wearing, but they can afford it or even know where to find something like that. In steps Rue 21, a store aimed directly at those kids who were desperately trying to look cool and express themselves. Rue 21 was like a savior because not only was it a leader in Gen Z fashion trends, it was always affordable. Something the company had always cared about even all the way back under the original ownership. That with being targeted in specific suburban areas, it seemed to just hit a certain spot for a lot of kids. I myself was in this age of kids who felt like, oh my god finally a store with stuff I like. It really just had all the stuff I wanted as a kid and really helped me express myself in my own way. They also had clever marketing tactics, like their Rubux program that let you earn in-store cash as you bought stuff, an online website that is now sadly defunct, and collaborations with artists and shows that really spoke to a certain generation. In 2011, the company showed its growth once more by announcing it would be expanding its distribution warehouse by almost twice the size, as well as implementing a more advanced scan-in, scan-out system and lighter packaging, all to help with efficiency. In 2014, they would start to introduce their plus size section in select stores, being one of the first of its kind to do so, with it being fully fledged out to all stores in 2020. And some select locations even had Rue Guy, an expanded and more in-depth mail section. It seemed like nothing could go wrong with how much the company was growing, but they just kept expanding up and up without ever making their foundation stronger. And behind the scenes, it was easy to see where the stone was starting to crack. Rue 21 was not alone in this market. Especially after growing in popularity, other competitors would start showing up. Either new companies trying to get in on the market, or classic companies trying to expand their reach. That wouldn't be a huge deal for Rue though. Even with competitions from other brick and mortar stores, they were still hot, accessible, and continued to stay trending with their core demographic. The problem was that even as early as 2009, people were starting to notice mall culture dying, and retailers were taking the needed shifts to stay relevant, leading to most of these companies slowing their role in opening new stores, even closing a few, and instead shifting their focus to online shopping. Which is why a lot of Gen Z probably never noticed very few stores like PacSun, Aeropostale, and Forever 21, 
which are historically seen as 2000s mall staples. While some other stores like Spencer's and Hot Topic have somehow managed to continue flourishing with brick and mortar stores, even they have a very large online aspect to their business. This would lead up to what was called the retail apocalypse. A period of time starting in the mid 2010s leading up to around the COVID pandemic, with 2017 being its peak. In 2017, it's estimated that over 12,000 physical retail stores had closed across America, and this wasn't some secret information hidden by the government or something. This was no news to companies, and even to consumers. So looking at this, what does Rue 21 decide to do? Decide to go from a casual 450 stores in 2009 to a whopping 1,200 stores by 2017, almost all of them being directly inside of malls, leading to yet another Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing. They closed 400 stores in 2017 and reopened bankruptcy only a few months later that same year in September, but it wasn't enough and the company would continue slowly closing stores. And shit would absolutely hit the fan when in March 2023, the company would hire its final CEO, Josh Burris. Josh Burris came onto the Rue scene at a time when the company absolutely needed anything to bring it back into the minds of teen consumers. He was previously CEO of GNC and reportedly was let go while on vacation for not doing his job very well or at all, and instead chose to live a flashy lifestyle. He was a tad butthurt about this, as evident when he came to Rue and used some of his money to buy a stake in Vitamin Shop, a direct competitor to GNC, and supposedly was giving them information about how GNC worked. And on top of that, he took several people he worked with from GNC and brought them over to Rue 21, promising significant pay raises. And he didn't take a few random people. He took the chief merchandising officer, chief strategic officer, chief people officer, and pretty much the whole HR department. It's also reported that Burris fired all of Rue 21's regional managers that had been there for years prior and employed two zone VPs that were not really qualified for the job and left many district managers in the dark about a lot of corporate decisions. Another corporate employee from Rue reported that once Burris was hired, he harvested an insanely toxic hustle bro environment, making people think working 70 to 80 hours was normal using scare tactics to make people fear him, and even pulling their entire LGBTQ and Black Lives Matter merch that they had done for years prior and had proven to be great money makers for the company. There have also been reports that there were some abusive phone calls with Beers during the news of them filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy yet again, telling employees not to worry and it's fine, even though they're literally in the process of closing all 540 stores with end of store sales going on right now as I'm recording this video. It's so insane how someone like this could still exist in 2024. He literally did everything you could possibly do to run a company into the ground. And so many people from the storefront level, all the way up to the corporate level, are worrying about how they're going to keep food on the table. And what is Josh Spears worried about? Not a damn thing. Because guess what? He already got a new job. A corporate insider for Rue reported, He knew a month before that we were going down and never communicated any sort of issue to us, told us that we were getting a loan and that all would be well. The best part is he let himself go the day before we filed for bankruptcy like a coward, and on Wednesday he and his executive friends, who drove the company into the ground, went to get a steak dinner while all of our employees were waiting to know if they still had a job the next day. We were all fed lies. And that wasn't it. Even store managers knew something was wrong when they started getting no shipments in and instead were borrowing from store to store to make sure all clothes ran out at the same rate. The most effed up part of all of this is the constant lies that he kept feeding people. Instead of just letting these people know the truth that their jobs aren't secured and this business is no longer tenurable, he instead lied right to their faces and made empty promises, leading to a wave of pissed off employees and customers like me who feel betrayed. We had no warning with this and neither did the company's own corporate workers. And this information is widely accessible all over the place. Rue 21 workers all over are sharing their stories, and rightfully so, and I encourage you to check some of them out. If you aren't aware, I always post my bibliography to these videos in the description, so you can check out some of the stuff on your own, and even more, and also to prove I do my research. And as always, keep an open mind, because you never know what your favorite companies and the people around you might be going through. And let me know what your thoughts are on this in the comments, and remember to leave a like so this video gets around more and people can know the truth behind Rue 21 and subscribe if you want to see even more stuff like this. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.